on sustainable development practices along the coast, such as the removal of mangroves, without leaving any intact between the sea and the land, destroy important fish nurseries and worsen the impacts of climate change. They did State Bank, the island right from here, you can't even see it, it used to be a landmark. All the mangroves gone from State Bank, then they plan to cut out all the mangroves from Swalaki and the Malanti areas. They, those are hatcheries for lobster and fish and when I don't realize that whenever they do those development, our fishing will change drastically. Well, and in front here used to be mangrove, baby. Well, to me, it used to secure me that now, if it rain and the breeze, it, can, it, it, it hold up the breeze and then house. Eh? My house, our oh, whole house, if you look on it, right? That are basically why they talk to them people about. If you see what weather coming right now, all them places are open, you know the breeze where this falls, man. Eh? The Belize City Sewage Treatment Facility was once assisted by nature with natural waterways that took all overflows to a large bank of mangroves near the sea. The mangroves function as a second filter, purifying the wastewater before it reached the reefs. Today, the development of a large cruise terminal and village near the facility has seen the removal of the surrounding mangroves and the blockage of those natural waterways. Yeah, I used to have some canals you know, direct to the sea when it rained water flow the sewage water and the fresh water come in. When they lock up the canals, the water couldn't flow out. And then the water not really healthy for we over here. Yeah. People used to swim right here in the early 60s. This used to be a known spot for swimmers because it was pristine and clean. It, it surprised me to see mud here because this used to be sun and the amount of garbage. I think what's um the problem with the corals, I think it's a wash out from these, um, these shrimp farms and these farms along the coast. When the rain comes, it takes all the um, pesticide out to sea and then it settles on the corals and then it, it kills. But people, the government don't want to listen to that because those um, shrimp farms are multi-billion dollar projects and they bring in a lot of revenue to the country. So the fishermen vice, they just don't listen. Waste and residue runoffs from the mainland oftentimes end up in the sea. We at World Wildlife Fund Central America have realized the effect that agro and agriculture industries are having on reef health and the overall health of the marine environment. As such, we've been actively working with these industries to implement best management practices and our farming alliances to reduce the use of dangerous agrochemicals by substituting for less toxic ones. This essentially will allow for a healthier environment for marine life. The concept of sustainable development is out there and you hear a lot of people talking about it, but putting it into action seems to be a lot more difficult. The development that we're seeing right now in Belize is certainly not conforming to sustainable development. Just look at the sewage problem that we have in Belize City now. We have contaminated waters actually reaching people's yards and affecting their health. You know, we've got to take these things into consideration in our coastal planning and also take into consideration the fact that sea levels will be rising and making these flooding issues even more problematic in the future. The disappearance of mangroves along the coast means the disappearance of nearby nurseries for fishes and other marine life. This, coupled with other human factors, such as overfishing, affects not only the fishing industry, but the overall health of the reef. Long time the fish don't know the bite. Long time. I used to go up on the beach there and fish. Me go out there and see big fish right along the water side. And I only drop my line there and the fish grab and run with it and I go hard and show. <laughs> but now that not happen again. There was a fisherman around from nine, maybe 1885 to the 90s. The fish started to get scared so I had to quit fishing because it was, I couldn't go the deeper, deeper anymore. <laughs> So I started to work in tourism. Through our Mesoamerican Climate Change Program, World Wildlife Fund Central America is trying to identify mitigation and adaptation strategies to cope under changing climatic conditions. Some of these measures include advocating through community participation to reduce mangrove clearance, working with community-based organizations to secure no development areas to protect low-lying lands, and working with municipal authority to enforce development plans and protected areas. 
As overwhelming as the issue of climate change seems, it is not too late for us as individuals to implement mitigation measures and adapt to the impacts of climate change. We can walk or bike more and drive less, replace incandescent bulbs in the home with energy-saving fluorescents, turn off all lights when not needed, and seek sources of renewable energy like solar, hydro and bagash to replace fossil fuels in homes and cars. We should not develop on the immediate coastline, always leaving sufficient mangrove or other vegetative buffer intact near any active water body. We can sign a petition to the UNESCO World Heritage Commission to place the Belize Barrier Reef on its in danger list. And we can keep lobbying our governments to go green for a living planet on national issues. Let us work together to ensure that our coastal resources remain healthy and that proper land use policies are put in place. Sustainable development is the only way we will be able to ensure a future for our children and grandchildren.